Hello everyone, welcome to Vishnu IAS. Today we are going to see another important recent current affairs topic, right of passage of the animals. Okay, so you can expect this question in your GS2 as well as in your GS3 and you can expect questions in prelims point of view also by Vishnu IAS team. Let's see what is there in the news. Recently, Supreme Court has confirmed the order of Madras High Court. Okay, so that is a 2011 order of the Madras High Court on the Nilgiris Elephant Corridor saying that right of passage of the animals and closure of resorts in the area. Okay, so that was the news. Okay, recently the Supreme Court have held the 2011 order of the Madras High Court on the Nilgiris Elephant Corridor approving the right of passage of animals and the closure of resorts in the area. So, what is the Madras High Court judgment? Okay, so what is the judgment of the Madras High Court? Is? In 2011, Madras High Court, uh, it confirmed the validity of the Tamil Nadu government's notification that was given by the government of Tamil Nadu in 2010. Okay, so that is a 2010 notification. So, Tamil Nadu government's notification of 2010, which declares an elephant corridor in the Sigur Plateau of Nilgiris district. Okay, in Nilgiris district, there is a Sigur Plateau. So, uh, that has to be declared as a elephant corridor. Okay, so in 2011, Madras High Court, it confirmed the validity of the Tamil Nadu government's notification of 2010, declaring that elephant corridor in Sigur Plateau of Nilgiris district. And in that, it said that government has a full power, that is, it is fully empowered under the project elephant of the union government and also according to the article 51 ag of the constitution to notify the elephant corridor in the states district okay what is that uh, article 51 ag is it is the duty of every citizen of india to protect and improve the natural environment okay so that includes the natural environment it includes forest lake river wildlife okay so everything is included in that natural environment okay so it is the duty of every citizen of india to protect and improve the natural environment and to have compassion for the living creatures okay so that was the actually article 51 ag okay and further it confirmed the directions to resort owners okay it give it has given the direction to the resort owners and other private land owners to vacate the land okay those uh, land which is coming under the notified elephant corridor okay so if a place it is declared as elephant corridor and if it if there is any resorts or any uh, private lands uh, the government has given direction for the resort or owners and also the private land owners to vacate the lands okay that is coming under the notified elephant corridor so that was the madras high court judgment okay in 2011 madras high court it upheld the validity of the tamil nadu government's notification of 2010 declaring elephant corridor in shigur plateau of nilgris okay and it said that uh, government is fully empowered under the project elephant of the union government as well as the article 51 ag of the constitution so what is this 51 ag is it shall be the duty of every citizen of india to protect and improve the natural environment okay that includes forest lake river and wildlife and to and to have compassion for living creatures okay and also it further it upheld the directions of the resort owners and other private landowners to vacate the lands that is coming under that is falling within the notified elephant corridor okay that was the judgment by the madras high court what is the highlights of supreme court judgment okay what the supreme court has told us it is a state's duty to protect a keystone species like elephant so what is keystone species is ketone species in ecology, it is a species that has disproportionately larger effect on the communities in which it lives. So, it, with those uh, species which have a greater effect on the communities in which it lives is a keystone species. Uh, it, uh, elephant will come under the keystone species. Okay, that is actually, it means uh, these species are very important to the environment. Okay, it plays a very important role and it is, it is immensely important, very, very important to the environment. So, that we call it is a keystone species. Okay, so it is state duty to protect the keystone species like elephants. Okay, and the elephant corridors. So, this elephant corridors will allow elephants to continue their nomadic mode of survival. Okay, you know how the elephant will live. So, it, it will move from one place to another. So, it is like a nomadic way of life, right? So, 
elephant corridors it will allow elephants to continue their nomadic mode of survival uh, because you know there is a uh, deforestation so the forest cover has been shrinking right so despite the shrinking of forest cover and by facilitating travel between the distinct forest habitats okay so elephant corridors it will allow the elephants to continue their nomadic mode of uh, survival despite that is even though there is a shrinking of forest cover so by that it can facilitate travel between the distinct forest habitats and this will play this elephant corridors this will play an very important role in sustaining the wildlife by reducing the impact of habitat isolation that means by reducing the impact of habitat isolation that is if the elephant corridors is there this will allow the elephants to continue their nomadic mode of survival so it will move from one place to another okay so it will facilitate the travel travel between the forest habitats so it is a very important role in sustaining wildlife so it will reduce the impact of habitat isolation so if it, so by reducing the impact of habitat isolation so this elephant corridors will play a crucial role in sustaining the wildlife and and the court it also allowed the formation of a committee okay so a court has allowed forming a committee so that will be this committee it will be led by a retired high court judge and two other persons so to hear the individual objections of the resort owners and private land owners so as you know so if a place actually in, uh, in this case it is a shigur plateau of nilgiris district okay so the resort owners and the private land owners of those Uh, elephant corridors place okay so within uh, those uh, land owners and the resort owners within the corridor space so in order to hear these persons objections there will be a committee that will be headed by a high court judge and two other persons to hear the objections of these people and also however during this hearings the supreme court opened that area is a fragile ecosystem so uh, the court is recommending uh, the men must give way to elephants okay so that was the uh, highlights of the supreme court judgment okay neil gris elephant corridor so where is this neil gris elephant corridor it actually it is situated in the ecologically fragile area that is shigur plateau in neil gris district so this plateau actually this will connect okay this connect the western and eastern ghats okay and it sustains the elephant populations and their genetic diversity and actually it is situated near the mudumalai national park in the nilgiris district and there are about 100 elephant corridors in, in india okay so in india uh, there nearly 100 elephant corridors are there so in which almost 70 are used 70% of those elephant corridors are used regularly by the elephants okay so 75 percentage of the corridors uh, are in south uh, southern central and the northeastern forest of india uh, and it is estimated that 6500 elephants is just the uh, it it is just in the brahmagiri nilgiris and eastern ghats ranges okay so in the brahmagiri nilgiris and eastern ghats ranges nearly there are 6000 elef- uh, 6500 elephants are living in those ranges and you know nearly 100 elephant corridors are there in india and 70% of those elephant corridors are used by the elephants regularly and 75% of the corridors it mainly situated in the southern central and the north east north eastern forest what are the challenges of the elef- elephant corridor okay challenges for elephant corridors right of passage actually this what is this right of passage is it is actually an 800 page study that was released in august 2017 and it was written by the experts and actually it is published in wti that is wildlife trust of india that actually what this report or what the study releases it identifies and record details pertaining to 101 elephant corridors across india okay so that was the right of passage okay it is an 800 page study released in august 2017 that is authored by experts and published in the wildlife trust of india which identifies and records details pertaining to 101 elephant corridors across india so what this report says is na- narrowing passage width so what is this narrowing passage width is so when you see in 2005 
41 percentage of the corridors were having a width of 1 to 3 kilometers but when you see in 2017 that is 12 after 12 years okay, 22 percentage of the corridors are having 1 to 3 kilometers width so the passage is getting narrowed so it is becoming shrinked okay the passage is becoming narrow okay because of human settlements okay and uh, when you see human enrochment of corridors, human enrochment is occupation by, occupy, uh, place was occupied by the uh, humans or it is trespassed by the humans. Okay. So, 21.8% uh, of the corridors were free of, of uh, human settlements in 2017 and which is compared to uh, 2005 which is 22.8%. And when you see 45.5% have 1 to 3 settlements in 2017 which is uncompared to 2017 which was only 42%. Okay, next is intercepted corridors. Intercepted corridors is having something in between. Okay, so about 36.4% of the elephant corridors in northwest and 32% in central. India and 357 in the Northwest Bengal and um, 13 percentage of the elephant corridors in northeastern India all these are having nearly uh, all are having a railway line passing through them so it is intercepted by a railway line and when you see almost two-thirds of the corridors are having either national highway or state highway passing through the corridors so by this the habitats have got divided or fragmented and because of this the elephant movement is hindered okay it got reduced and 11 percentage of corridors they have canals passing through them and 12 percentage of the uh, are being affected by the mining and the extractions of the boulders so that was the reason for intercepted corridors and when you see the land use along the corridors so in terms of land use only 12.9 percentage of the cor uh, corridors are totally under forest cover in 2017 but in when you see in 2005 24 percentage of the corridors were under completely under forest cover now only 12 percentage are under complete forest cover okay so that is two in every three elephant corridors in the country are now affected by the agriculture activities and all the corridors in the northwestern bengal that is 100 percent and almost 96 percent in um, central india and 52 percent in the northeastern India were under uh, settled cultivation and uh, 43 percent under uh, slash and burn cultivation so all these corridors are coming under the they have the agriculture lands in them okay so that is the uh, because of this land use along the corridors uh, now the corridors is uh, have uh, it is not totally under forest cover only 12.9 percentage is totally under forest cover uh, remaining is under a uh, land use along the corridors so asian elephants okay when you see elephants there are three subspecies of asian elephant one is indian sumatran and sri lankan so three subspecies of the asian elephants and india has the widest range of elephants and it accounts for the majority of remaining elements on the continent on the continent majority of remaining elephants there is there in india only okay and um, because of poaching and habitat loss, human elephant conflict and mistreatment in captivity, which are the common threats uh, uh, to the elephants in Asia and Africa. Okay, so for both these side of elephants, uh, it has been a very big problem. Okay, so escalation of poaching, uh, habitat loss, human elephant conflict and mistreatment in captivity are some of the common threats to both African and Asian elephants and uh, African elephants are listed under vulnerable and Asian elephants are under endangered in IUCN red list uh, of threatened species okay and when you see what are the conservation efforts that was taken as uh, project elephant actually it was launched by government of india in 1992 and it is a centrally sponsored uh, scheme so elephant census is also conducted every five years okay under the edges of the project elephant okay so under this project every five years the elephant census has been taken and establishment of elephant reserves and adoption of the world elephant day on august 12 so every year august 12 is de um, declared as the world elephant day so this is to conserve and protect the elephants in india next is gaj yatra so what is this gaj yatra is an actually it is a national wide awareness campaign so for what this campaign is it is in order to celebrate the elephants and 
highlight and show the world the necessities of the securing elephant corridor so that is the gaj yatra so next is the monitoring the illegal killing of elephants mic program that was actually launched in 2003 actually it is an international collaboration that tracks the information related to the illegal killing of the elephants across africa and asia and it also uh, monitors the effectiveness of the field conservation efforts so these are the few conservation efforts that was taken for elephant that's all thank you i hope you like this video if you like this video click on like button and share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe our channel do subscribe our channel and join our telegram channel link to get info about the delhi current affairs and to get the value added materials thank you